In this sample program, I'm going to show you how to accumulate totals and how to evaluate some very simple decision statements. The premise of the program is that when a customer spends over $100, they will receive a 25% discount on their total purchase price. If they spend between $50 and $100, they'll receive a 10% discount on their purchase price. If they spend less than $50, there is no discount. So let's walk through the logic. We're going to start up here. We have initialized total, which is my accumulator that will accumulate the totals of the program, the total amount. We always have to do our priming. That sometimes we read this time we're getting it from the user, where they're going to input the sales price of the item. As long as the amount is not equal to zero, we're going to add the total to the total make total equal the total plus the amount. So we're going to add whatever they just bought to the running total. So then we're going to ask them to input the amount or the price of their next item again. And as long as it's not equal to zero, we'll keep looping until they're done. To signal that they're done, all they have to do is enter zero. Now this is not comprehensive because we are accepting negative numbers here, so it's not really aggressive at preventing errors. I'm not going to worry about that at this stage of programming. We're going to get to a simple decision statement. We're going to check to see if total is greater than 50. If total is greater than 50, we'll check to see if total is greater than 100. If total is greater than 100, we'll give them a 25% discount. You may have noticed there's a typo here. I did that on purpose. I know where the error is, but I want to show you some error solving techniques to find it if you didn't see that. If they have a total of between 50 and 100, their discount becomes 10%. We're going to output the total before a discount was and display the total. We're going to make the total equal the total minus the discount. Your total is your discount was, and then we're going to display that at the end. Now if they have spent less than $50, we're just going to display the total. And I always want to try every single possible scenario to test it. So we do have one error in here. Let's show you it working correctly first. And I try to use simple maths that I can easily gauge if it's correct. So I'm just going to put in 20 here. And then I'm going to put in zero. So we're only going to buy one item at $20, and it should simply say your total is 20. That is the less than tw less than $50 category. That worked perfectly. Let's shoot for something with a total of $75. So we're going to put in multiple things. I'm going to put in 25 and 25 and 25 for a total of 75. This should give me a 10% discount. I'm going to put in zero because I'm done. That signals that the total before discount was 75, your total is 67.50, and your discount was 6.75. Perfect. Except my do to my discount should have been seven dollars and fifty cents. So we've got an error there too. So let's take a quick look at that error. We find them as we find them, we should fix them. Let's figure out what we're doing wrong. Ah, uh, it's where I am. Your get discount was total times discount. We changed the, um, we actually need to put this up here before we calculate the discount. And that should fix it because it changes the total here. So it's calculating it off the total. So we did it in the wrong order. So the total before any discounts should display the total, which would have been $75. The output, your discount was and this should calculate the discount and your to new total. This should actually say new total. Uh, that's right, that's fine. Your total after the discount is applied is. Okay, so what happened was I put the, that in the wrong order. Let's try it again. Let's do the exact same thing. I'm going to put in 25, 25. and 25 and it is critical that you test your programs before you hand them in and you want to try all of the different variables. 
Okay, 75, discount was 750, total was 6750. Okay, that's all correct. Now, I know I have an error over on my last portion of my statement here for the over $100. Let's see what happens when I run it. So we're going to make this simple. I'm going to put in $40 for the first one, and I'm going to put in $70 for the second. That'll take me over 100 Put in zero at the end because I'm done. Okay, so my total before any discounts was 110. That is correct. My discount was zero. That is incorrect. So it's not giving me the discount amount. So what I really want to do is I want to check and see here, and it's showing discount. So my discount was zero, so I know that that's not working. And this is what you want to do when you're trying to find errors. It'll tell you that something's wrong with discount that'll force you to look at it. So I actually put that in just for error checking. It's good to give feedback to the customer, but if you're not sure what's happening, display your variables that helps you find them. So this should be discount. And now if I try it, and again, I found that because I was displaying what each amount was. So since I was displaying your discount was, it gives me my error. So let's try this again. Enter the price of the item. We'll say 50. Oops, okay, we'll just say 500. That's fine. And we'll say zero. We know it's adding correctly. Total before was 500. Your discount was 125. Total after discount is applied is 375. And if we wanted to go one step further, we could just do output here of discount equals and the word discount to see that it's 0.25. We're going to run this again. And this is a really good way just to display the variable to figure out what's going on. Again, I'm going to just put in 150 or 140 typo and 0. And so, oh, I have an error here. I forgot the plus sign. Discount equals, we've got to concatenate because it's a string, plus discount. You will make errors when programming. I almost always do. Just get used to it. 140, OK. Zero, OK. Discount equals 0.25. So that way we see we get the correct value assigned and everything else works perfectly. So when we're done, we can delete that because the user doesn't actually need to see that. That was just put in as a test value to make sure that everything was working correctly. And I do that a lot. It really helps me find errors. So this goes through how to use decisions, how to use a sentinel value, zero, to trigger the stop or end of a loop, and how to do some basic error checking.